it's Maxine. It's been so long. I don't even know how long it's been since I posted a long form video or whatever you call it. Format or short form, long form, whatever. <laughs> anyway, basically one of the, well, the main reason I haven't been posting is because um, I just picked up a second part-time job which just really works well with my first like my other job I'm on call for um, a corporation I don't really want to like I don't want to say what it is yet but I've been there with them for about seven eight months now on call and it's a company where I hope to work my way into full-time and they would be really good long term with benefits and sick days and a pension and everything like that so you know even though it's not glamorous sometimes and it's not ex a very creative job and it's there are a lot of positives to it that work well with my disabilities both physical and mental and so I want to try to stick with them, but because it's on call, like my income has been so low for so long that I'm like, okay, I just need to go out there and get something. And what I picked up is like, a, um, you know, like Uber Eats or DoorDash or Skip the Dishes. One of those three is what I picked up. And the reason I like it so much is it works well around my other job because any day that I'm not called in, I could just go pick up shifts. They're pretty easy to pick up every day. And so I've been enjoying that, um, keeping busy and finally having a little more money to do things like, or just pay my own bills and, um, like spoil myself a little bit, hardly anything I can really that comes to mind is just ba some basic necessities I still haven't even gone for a pedicure or manicure after like not having one for probably three four years at least I had such long nice nails and even my toenails and I was waiting for the day where I was gonna go get one and then I kept breaking some they were like the strongest healthiest I've ever had and but then I started cracking some and then I anyways you didn't come here to listen to me talk about that but I thought that was an interesting thing and so what I what this video is about is kind of like a little update about what I've been doing but then also um I'm already at like the seven and a half month point of sobriety, which, um, no, I was not anywhere near rock bottom when I decided to quit. It was more so something I had thought about for a long time about how, you know, drugs and alcohol impact so many lives and not in a good way. Um, you know, I have a past with acting really foolish while intoxicated and then my upbringing was surrounded by alcoholism, which, um, you know, like, I think even if you took alcohol, if you took that out of the equation, I think my childhood still would have been very miserable because this person had, my father had a lot of things to deal with. And even when he was sober, he was very angry and abusive verbally, emotionally, mentally manipulative and physical and threatened physical violence all the time and there was sexual abuse as well. So alcoholic, some people are happy alcoholics but they're still alcoholics where it's ruining their health or ruining, you know, and people worry about them so it impacts the people around them but um I think like seeing some influencers or celebrities who I kind of not looked up to. I've never really been one of those people who I have like idols who I like keep up with and know their birthday and 
obsess about or anything, but just people who I've enjoyed watching like their videos or whatever over the years and um and then when Matthew Perry died um I know he was sober for a while I don't know if he relapsed when he passed or if it was but either way um like I said in my first video like I'm not the biggest Matthew Perry fan or anything like that I'm not trying to um use what happened to him as like the whole reason I became sober but I'm just saying that that's one of many where it's like they have a story to share and he's written a book and um you know I just think it's one of those things where it could be really well hidden too and you might not even realize some people are full-blown alcoholics. I remember a long time ago when I first got into my whole keto phase of my life, a lady said she was drinking like four bottles of wine a day and stuff. And, and um, for myself personally, like the last time I really was drinking in excess was probably in my early 30s. And then I stopped around that time because, well, for one, I was a professional with my own home daycare and um I could go a long time without it it was only ever like social it was never like a daily thing I needed never ever of course anything that I did while working and um so for myself yes in my early 30s is when I officially stopped like pretty much the bar phase of my life where I was still going out dancing drinking with friends and then, you know, I would have it on occasion and maybe some months, a little more than others, but for like, with a hundred percent certainty, I can tell you that I like, ne it was never something I thought about every single day that I needed. It was just kind of like, if occasions came up or I think I started to get into the habit where it was like once a week and then um, and then I could go months without and then it would be like a few times or once a day. Oh, I haven't done a video in a long time and I have <laughs> sometimes it would be like several times like once one drink a day for a week or something but then not at all for months and then it would be like the same thing. And then I could go months without, but then when I started my other job, when I first moved here, I noticed it started to become more of a habit and not in a way where it was really affecting me, but just that, um, I didn't like that I thought I needed it or something. And I was drinking alone, which isn't something that I ever really did before often. And, um... I'm distracted by a loom down there. <laughs> it's like it went under and splashed up and I thought, oh, what's there? <laughs> anyway, um, I just know how it like really affects people. And I read some interesting things like I didn't know that, you know, it could lead to depression for up to days at a time after doing it. And so I just think it affects people a lot more than they even realize it's like they don't understand why they're feeling so low or why they're depressed for days at a time after drinking well or you know you're feeling so low so then the next day you have it and then that helps and then the next day you feel like crap again so then you have it again and it it's like feeding that it's like turning into a cycle where you feel dependent on it so so just not needing anything was my main goal because I'm still an addict it's like I'm still overweight so when I'm not drinking or haven't really ever done many drugs in my life but when I'm not doing that stuff then I'm over indulging in sugar I'm like a sugar addict and I don't smoke and then when I was doing keto and I was getting my weight under control and lost 70 pounds, then I started going to Popeye's supplements and getting 
like those expensive chips and bars almost every single day, like high protein stuff. So when it's not that, it's that. And then, so it's like, there's always something and I'm trying to find healthy, healthy outlets, like by staying busy, taking my dogs to do things, making these videos helps. Um, I have had eating disorders in my life and I finally have beaten all of them in the last about two years this summer I would say and I think that's mostly due to not being so restrictive where it used to be like all or nothing and then I would feel guilty and it would lead to those cycles of like starvation or um, purging and um, even like you know you don't have to be stick thin to be bulimic like there's a lot of big girls like me who or even men who have been and that was like on and off since I was a teenager and um so I'm just really trying to get into this phase of my life where I don't like feel like I need anything and I'm not doing anything so restrictive so that I get myself back into those bad patterns and I'm just enjoying like being fully myself all the time there are times where I'm like well you know you haven't had a problem with it for years and you could probably easily go out and have one drink and that'd be more than enough but then and that happened a few times in the past six months but then I'm like but I'm still doing this for a purpose so it's not about fully me and if I can control myself around alcohol, it's just about what it does to people like in society. Like I'm pretty sure everyone has known or has battled with drugs or addiction in their life. So it's just really important to me to like just become not dependent on anything and that included like I even quit coffee for a full month and the only reason I started drinking it again is because um I with my job they sent me to one of the islands nearby to work a few times and I'd have to get on the 5 a.m ferry so I'd have to be up at three in the morning and <laughs> And because I was so anxious and excited, like I wouldn't get a lot of sleep the night before. And then I just felt like I needed caffeine so that I would have a successful day and it wouldn't, um, you know, and I'd be a little bit more on my game and not tired, but it's like, well, it's just kind of like all in your head. Like I probably could have had the exact same day with or without the caffeine. Like it wasn't really needed. And by not drinking caffeine, like, my teeth have gotten so much whiter. And, um... So, you know, and I talked to my friend about it too. I'm like, you know, there's been times where I just felt like, okay, I could just, you know, I don't need to kind of like that all or nothing mentality it's like it's been like that a lot of my life like I was vegetarian vegan pescatarian and and you know and then battling with my weight and then doing strict diets like keto and south beach and and then so and then with the whole like being strict with diet leading to binge binging and purging and that type of thing and feeling guilt then I started thinking well is it going to be the same with alcohol am I going to have this moment where I'm like I just have to or something and then is it going to turn into a bad habit but so far I it hasn't but I was just talking to her about that and saying like you know maybe I should just not be fully sober and just have it on occasion and she, you know she just kind of said you know if I were you I just wouldn't because and just told me some personal things that I won't share but it's like I'm 
So I'm not just doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for the people in my life. I'm doing it for others. I'm doing it for the addicts that really want to and are struggling or relapsing. And I'm doing it for you guys too. And <laughs> I don't mean to be corny. That makes me kind of want to cry, but it's just that like when you grow up in a household with addiction and how it turns people into like someone they're really not or you know some of the best people it turns into them into people they're not and then it takes people who still really do need help and turns them into someone like out of control and um so i just <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying. I just feel bad for the people out there who really um, feel hopeless and lost that they're not going to be able to beat their addiction. Like, I don't know what that feels like. But, whew, that really struck a nerve, I guess, with me. Um, and it's just a mixture of things. It's feeling bad for people and then it's feeling really bad for children who are in these environments where they didn't ask to be, you know, exposed to that type of lifestyle. And it can be very toxic and traumatizing. And But then, you know, like the people who are addicts didn't ask to be addicts and... I have a really hard time when people say like, oh, it's a choice and this and that. Like, of course it's a choice to go out and get help. But I think that, you know, depend, it really depends what you've done and everything and brain damage. Like, there's certain people who, it would just take a lot of resources to get completely clean time and money and help from people around them and some people just simply don't have that and that's why you see so many people on the streets and anyway it's very complicated but um, part of my sobriety is just like as a protest and doing it for others and that makes me feel good and makes me want to keep going long term so next I just want to say that I haven't been making videos as I said because of work and getting the new job and I think I'll make a video someday about how that job is um, I really have no business doing that job my vehicle is like horrible on gas so I'm not getting paid like very well at all there are times when it's not busy and it's like I could be making literally minimum wage once you take gas out there's there's times where it's dead and, or whatever I accepted an order that takes me so far away and then back I have to go back to get to where restaurants are because there's a lot of rural areas around and I'm spending so much in gas that it's like I'm making almost $10 an hour, like really ridiculous. But like I said, because it's so flexible, it's the only thing that really works around my other job. So I'm kind of just at this phase in my life where I'm like, I don't know if I should just get a completely new full-time job and keep my vehicle. I love my vehicle and even talking about getting rid of it makes me feel bad, but then or should I just keep both jobs and downgrade my vehicle to electric? Because if I had electric, then it would make a lot more sense with one of the jobs, but the other job requires me to have a lot of space in my vehicle. So it's kind of like I'm just in this phase, not really knowing what to do. Definitely leaning more to wait towards staying as things are and not finding a new job because it's kind of like well don't fix what isn't broken like if I'm enjoying myself things are going well for the first time in a long time because before this I was self-employed for four years so it was it was a really long time since I've been been back in the workplace and I have a lot of fears and anxieties about my past and trauma being on an autistic ADHD person with CPTSD and fibromyalgia I like go into when I 
go into any job, I have to consider all those factors and what works for me. And so I found two things that really work, but, um, you know, it's just, it is difficult sometimes like financially and everything, but, um, so like I said about having to get up early to do the fairies and needing coffee and stuff so something happened like where it was a really long day because there was only so many fairies a day that go to and from this island that I had to go to and um on one of the days you know after having like next to no sleep and it's a long day and having to get up at like 3 a.m to catch this ferry and worrying about my dogs and everything and the ferry being delayed at the end of the day on top of everything I was just like feeling pretty moody and then I just sighed to myself and I'm like <sighs> and I told myself in my head I'm like oh well you're gonna see whales on the ferry <laughs> which isn't something that happens very often it's pretty rare like if I even talk to locals and stuff like you don't just sit out and see whales every single day like um Whoa, speaking of that, there's a whale watching boat right there. So I bet there's some nearby, but way too far for me to see. But anyway, um... <laughs> wow. But anyway, um, you know, even when you catch the ferry, it's not something you'll see all the time. And just sitting out by the sea, it's not something you'll really notice unless they're really close up because for the most part they're not just jumping out of the water like you might just see the dorsal fin like and when I say whales I'm mainly talking about killer whales because yeah I don't know if we it'd be probably a lot less noticeable to notice if any other kind of whales were around but um oh yeah the um I wish I had binoculars. There's a whale watching boat and they've turned off their engine there, so they must be right nearby. It's just one of the things I love so much about living here is I just love animals so much and I love all the sea creatures. <laughs> anyway, so back to my story. So I just kind of sighed to myself and I was like, oh, well, you're going to see whales on the ferry, just like tricking myself into feeling better. And then literally within five minutes, there were whales in the harbor. And I just saw two come up in their dorsal fins. And it was kind of exactly like the time where I went kayaking and saw them. And, and it just made me, reminded me like, well, for one, it was just such a funny coincidence, but I swear to God, I have so many stories like that where I'm like this instant manifester. <laughs> like I'm really good at manifesting to the point where it's like, I, t I know it's more coincidence than real manifesting, but <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of 50-50. <laughs> like it's pretty... I don't know I just have these things that happen in my life where I've had like things like dreams that come true and stuff like that so um but that's like the kind of mentality I try to keep with myself like staying positive and positive self-talk and and be, you know being able to manifest your dreams and so And then, so I just wanted to share that little story. I wish I kind of said it differently, but I haven't made videos in so long. I'm really bad at this now. <sighs> but anyway, um, yeah, other than that, there's really nothing much to share. I just, um... You know, I'm still 40 pounds down from my max, but I've been 40 pounds down from my max for probably a year now. Like I just kind of have stayed 
at a standstill, but I think that's part of doing things right and losing slowly is just that there are periods where it's like, well, I do feel so much better than I felt when I was at my max. So I'm in this comfort phase where I just want to stay and have things as they are, but I wouldn't be happy being the way that I am now for the rest of my life. I still want to work harder and one of the things I have to do is start getting more active because work is inconsistent and then I have these jobs that one of them's a little bit more physical demanding than the other but then I just need to get out more with my dogs and go walking and they don't really like to go on long walks and hikes and stuff they're black and in the summer they don't really care to be out for that long <laughs> But, um, you know, one thing I think about is that I'd like, maybe like to get into the gym sometime. I just have always like naturally been able to put on so much muscle. Like, yes, a lot of fat, of course, but like, you know, there's, well, it's like bone mass and everything, but it's not as good as it once was, but, um, you know, there's people, I know people who are like an inch shorter than me, but they have a completely different frame to them, like a very thin, like even if you ripped all the fat off my body and put me next to like someone, for example, that I'm thinking of, they have a very small bone structure where they have like very thin limbs and legs and smaller feet and just everything like that. So it's, I just think I've been able to keep muscle on pretty easily in my life or put it on easily and maybe that'll be my next adventure, my next task and my next outlet to stay eating healthy and it's just that if that becomes my next addiction, well I have fibromyalgia and I deal with a lot more pain and recovery takes a lot longer than the average person. So yeah, it's not really something I can fully commit my time to, but it would be good for me to um, do on occasion. And kind of start using my time more wisely to get back into doing videos that I like well working both jobs it's kind of hard and doesn't leave a lot of time for my fur babies which they're so used to having me around all the time so working this much is makes me feel guilty that I'm not just sitting there with them <laughs> like my two cats because they can't go on adventures <laughs> they could but I mean I can't see myself with it cat backpack with two cats in it and then walking two dogs at the same time that would be a bit much i'm just my attention's caught on this whale watching boat i've been watching it for a while and i'm like hmm, i wonder where they're going anyway thank you so much for watching my video um i promise to get back to doing more and um and I appreciate all the comments and likes and um, you know if you have anything to share about what I've said whether it be drugs addictions and eating disorders working being disabled and whale watching stories anything like that put it down below <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day.